I would like to welcome each one of you for this another session of our Bible study and we are dealing with life and ministry of Paul. Just would like to thank you all for joining and especially thank you for continuously being very curious about this class. So overwhelmed with your testimonies and your texts, how you have responded. And I have seen that many of you are blessed with these classes. We are here to serve you as the kingdom of God. We are here to serve you, to lead you more in Christ. So on behalf of Calvary Assembly, we want to thank you all for joining in from all different parts of the world. You know, I know most of you are there at midnight from Ireland and from UK and those people, even Australia. Thank you for joining in those people who are joining in from uh, from Middle East, we thank you from India and other parts of Asia and USA and Canada. Thank you so much. God bless you. I do believe that this is going to make a great impact in your life. So friends, as we were dealing with life and ministry of Paul, we dealt with his conversion. We dealt with his discipleship with other disciples. And also we dealt with his first missionary journey. Last week, we finished the second missionary journey. Apostol Nai Paulus ne jeevido. Tane sisvushem yenna parayna yi subject namal deal jiyan thodangi ite. Apostol Nai Paulus ne conversion. Tane jeevithrun daya mana sandram. Tane discipleship. Shishem maro dappam ninna chala nimishangal. Adani shesham. Tane ministry leka karne veri gayi. ഒന്നാമത്തെ മിഷണറി ജേണി രണ്ടാമത്തെ മിഷണറി ജേണി രണ്ട് മിഷണറി ജേണി നമ്മൾ കഴിഞ്ഞ ആഴ്ച ആ രണ്ടാമത്തെ മിഷണറി ജേണി നമ്മൾ തീർത്തത് സോ ഇൻ ആ ജേണി വി ഹാവ് സീൻ ദ വണ്ടർഫുൾ വേസ് ഹൗ ഗാഡ് ഹാസ് യൂസ് ഫോർ സി ഐ വോണ്ട് ടു ലെറ്റ് യു നോ ദ മോസ്റ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് തിങ് വട്ട് ഈസ് ഹാപ്പനിങ് ഹിയർ ഇസ് യു ആർ ഐഡൻറ്റിഫൈങ് ദ ബൈബിൾ സ്പെഷ്യലി വെൻ യു റീഡ് സം പോർഷൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ ബൈബിൾ യു വിൽ ക്ലിയർലി ഐഡൻറ്റിഫൈ വേർ ദിസ് പോർഷൻ ഹാപ്പൻ ഓർ വേർ വോസ് when did this happen was that during the first missionary journey second missionary journey or third missionary journey every journey makes it very very interesting second missionary journey was so interesting because we could see one step ahead from the first missionary journey in first missionary journey it was syllabus of paul paul made the route he made the call where to go but in second missionary journey god made the call god guided him even god there were places where god said don't preach god said do not go and god rerouted especially from troas when he was about to go to other places god said no holy spirit led him to macedonian call where he came to philippi and from philippi he came to thessalonica from berea and then to athens and to corinth and that's how he finished his second missionary journey last week we completed the second missionary journey and the interesting thing was how god led third missionary journey is where we have come now third missionary journey is very emotional because this is the last journey of apostle paul apostolnaya paulos vi avasanatha journey valare adhigam emotional or journey you will see farewell speeches you will see how paul identified that it's now time for him to depart in this journey even though he starts his journey but ends up his journey in prison and after the third missionary journey he actually departed from this world so third missionary journey is very very emotional if you really go deep into the life of apostle paul you will see how how much attached he was with god and the christ love that radiated through his life was so powerful e moonamatha missionary journey lulla apostolnaya paulus de avasanatha journey than aarambikkunathu valare santoshathoda aanengil polum avasanikkunathu oru 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 kaaragrahathila avasanam kaaragrahathil than kollappadunu anganeya marikkunathu e moonamatha missionary journey lulla othri emotional kaaryangal namukku kaanan pattum van വളരെ വളരെ തൻ്റെ എല്ലാ ഭാവങ്ങളും കാണിക്കുന്ന ഒരു 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 ജേർണിയായത് ഇതിനകത്ത് തന്നെ അവസാനത്തെ സ്പീച്ചുകൾ പറയുന്നുണ്ട് എനിക്ക് നിങ്ങളെ കാണണം എന്നൊരാഗ്രഹമുണ്ട് എന്നൊക്കെ പറയുന്ന വളരെ ടച്ചിങ് ആയ ചില എക്സ്പീരിയൻസസ് ഉണ്ട് സോ 
we are going to do with this third mystery journey. I want you all to have your undivided attention as we go through this. Now, the most important thing as we uh, learn these important things, we also need to identify every event, which event was happening where or who was connected and which was that route. So, so far, you know what happened in first missionary journey. You know what happened in second missionary journey. So, it is very important to know what is happening in third missionary journey. Many times we just get confused. For example, in second missionary journey, he was in Antioch. He was in, uh, he was in uh, Troas. He went to Ephesus. He went to Corinth. But when he come to third missionary journey, again he went few other places, the same places like Ephesus. He went to Ephesus. He, he also went to Troas. He also went to Galatia and Phrygia. But we need to know that what happened in second missionary journey and what happened in third missionary journey. Because that also shows the theological framework. Because in the second missionary journey, his theological framework you will see that it is progressing in the third missionary journey. So second mission, every missionary journey, his theological framework was, was prospering, was progressing. So that is very important. So let's jump to see what happened on Paul's third missionary journey. Moonamathe missionary journey, yendu asambhavichadha inna namala kanabogu. So, so this is the map. You have seen many maps of first missionary journey and second missionary journey. And this is the third missionary journey map. So starts all the way from Antioch actually. So here is where, here is where he begins his journey. Syrian Antioch. Why I said Syrian Antioch? Because there is another Antioch uh, and that Antioch is Pisidian Antioch. So if you see this one, Pisidian Antioch. So there are two Antiochs in Bible. One is Syrian Antioch, where is the first, you know, Christian church that you have seen where Paul ministered a lot. This is first uh, Christian church and that is Syrian Antioch. Second Antioch is Pisidian Antioch. So from uh, Syrian Antioch, he started his journey all the way to Pisidia, Phrygia, and then he came. He comes to Ephesus. Every time the journey is different. He comes to Ephesus. From Ephesus, he's, he goes to you know Troas, Troas, and all those places. We'll come one by one. So this is third missionary journey. This is one more map that you can see from Antioch. He begins with from Antioch, and all the way. This is the route that he goes. The route that he goes, Tarsus, Mistra, this way. And he goes all over to this place, comes back to Jerusalem. So we may not be finishing everything today because this is a little more detailed one. So we might take two to three classes to do the third missionary journey. But with this three classes, we will be done with the subject called Life and Ministry of Paul. We will definitely deal with another subject called the books or letters written by Paul. That will be different, but Life and Ministry will end up with probably two to three classes in the days to come. Let's see how it goes. So this is another easy way of slide to understand who, who he started his journey all the way from Antioch. From Antioch, he goes to Galatia, Phrygia, and then from there to Ephesus, from Ephesus to Macedonia, Macedonia to Troas, Assos, Mytilene, Kos, Rhodes, and Patara, Caesarea, and Jerusalem. So this is the whole roadmap of third missionary journey. Third missionary journey. Moonamathe missionary journey ne roadmap by the Sadhikira, Antioch, Dodagano, Galatia, Frigale, Pono, Ephesus, Liketuno, or the Macedonia. So in the missionary journey the route is different. You remember? The first missionary journey that they started was from, uh, from, 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 you know, Antioch. When they started, they took the route of Crete. From Crete, Paphos, from Paphos, they went to other places, right? But second missionary journey was completely different. From Galatia, Phrygia, 
They came up to Troas. From Troas, he received the Macedonian call, goes to Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, Athens, Corinth, Ephesus, and back to Jerusalem. Here, it's a different route again. So it's a mix and match. Also, in third missionary journey, Paul is going and touching those places who, where he already visited. But interesting. interesting. So if you are a student, a good learner, this is very, very interesting. If you are a Bible lover, this is very interesting. So, you know, I'm trying to make it so easy so that you will not forget it. I'm trying, I'm putting everything together so that it will be easy for you to remember. And I hope that this is easy for you. Okay. So far you have been blessed. This also will be blessing. So, St. Paul's third missionary journey. So, his journey begins uh, in Acts chapter 8, verse 23. In Acts chapter 18, sorry, 18, verse 23. Paul travels from Antioch. Antioch is his hometown now. Now, that became his ministerial hometown because Paul, uh, Paul and Barnabas, they were... They were selected in this church to go for a missionary journey for God's work. And Paul always went back and reported Antioch. In the first missionary journey, definitely Paul had Barnabas with him. But then second missionary journey, Barnabas departed from him and he got another person. Silas and Luke joined in second missionary journey. Third missionary journey, we will look who is joining him. Okay, So Paul travels from Antioch to Antioch. Asia Minor region of Galatia and Phrygia in order to strengthen the faith of the Christians there. Malayalatil Gudi Namala Apostola Apostola Pravarti Padreta Matyam and Yvati Muna Bakyam Malayalatil Kudi Namala the Vikam. Avida Kurena and Thomas situation Purapeta Kramatale Galata de Shikilim. So, missionary journey, Munamate missionary journey in the Lecce Venda Duchinale, Tan Chelina Stalangal, either a Mumbe Chenna Stalangali, Chenutane, our relationship mare, Atigam, the Suasatri, or a picking up. See, this is another important thing. What was the ultimate aim of Apostle Paul when he was doing missionary journey. Missionary journey was not only to have new converts, was not only to have more souls to be added, but also to strengthen who have been added. See, this is one of the important things we all should understand that. Why churches exist? Why pastors exist? It's, see, Definitely we need to have more souls. We need to have more evangelism and missions. At the same time, we should not forget that God also wants us to strengthen those who are in faith. They need a daily strength. They need daily instructions. So Paul in this missionary journey, definitely he was there to share gospel with those people who don't know gospel. But also one more adding thing was he wanted to strengthen the disciples. So that used to be the agenda of missionary journey. It's not only to get new converts, but also to strengthen the one who is already in faith. So the story of third missionary journey is narrated in Acts chapter 19, verse 1 till 20. You should read this portion when you get time. Acts chapter 19, verse 1 till 20. So he eventually arrived. So he started his journey, started from Antioch, went to Galatia and Phrygia, ended up in Ephesus and stays in the city for little more than three years. Now, very importantly, you should remember. If you remember last week's class, when Paul was doing ending up his second missionary journey after Corinth, he went to Ephesus. He definitely went to Cancaria. But then uh, he took out his hair from that place and, and then he went to Ephesus. But in Ephesus, he didn't stay long. He just passed by Ephesus and he asked 
Aquila and Priscilla to stay in Ephesus. Paul said, I am leaving, but I will return. I will return very soon. As soon as he left and his second missionary journey ended up in Jerusalem, Paul is starting third missionary journey and he remembered that he asked Aquila and Priscilla to stay in Ephesus. So in third missionary journey, Paul first went to Ephesus and he stayed there for more than three years. Nikal Randamatha missionary journey Sadhicha Sadhicha Ganamariku. After Apostle Apollo, sir, Corinthian in the Yarangita, Nere Ephesos, Swadi, Yerushalem, Petan the Pogan. Upon Ephesus in the Paul, after a cool and all parka, patata the Gonda, Aculan and prisoner of Barnu, Ephesus in Nilka Barnu. Now, Vega than a Madagi Veram the Pateta, Ephesus in the Petan and Pogu and the Abdin in the Vilia Ministry of Nunchiam Patita. Pachel, Chen the Yerushalem, Janata, Andiokin, Janata, Sabay Locker, report a Kapanan Shishamthan, Adat the Munamath, the Mister Yerniquini, than Arabic about near every Ephesus Liga. Then he ordered that no, Akula, Priscilla, or Akita. So Paul was very strategic in his mission. As soon as he left Ephesus, he wanted to come back soon. So, third missionary journey, main focus was Ephesus, where already Akula and Priscilla was ministering in Ephesus. So, Paul actually appointed Aquila and Priscilla to minister in Ephesus where he could not do. Friends, this is the power of ministry. Remember, ministry is partnership. Ministry is trusting, uh, trusting our companions, our friends. You know, we Paul, Paul knows that he should have been stayed there in Ephesus. But then when he wanted to rush back to Jerusalem, he, he didn't leave them alone. He didn't leave that city without any arrangement. But rather, he appointed Aquila and Priscilla to be in the city. Friends, this is another strategy of mission work. When, you know, you have to make partners in mission. You cannot do by yourself. Never think that something that only I can do. But you, we need to we need to train and trust people to handle the missions that God has given us. And this is how Paul did. So he eventually arrives in Ephesus and he stays there. Um, going forward in third missionary journey, God's will was that Paul would visit Ephesus. So he and Timothy journeyed through Asia to the fourth largest city in the empire. That means Ephesus was the fourth largest city in the empire. Now listen, just comparison, just comparison. First missionary journey, who was Paul's companion? If you can just type it down, if you remember. In first missionary journey, who was Paul's companion? It was Barnabas, right? In second missionary journey, who was the companion? It was Silas. And in third missionary journey, who is the companion? Timothy. Definitely Timothy was there in the second missionary journey also. But then in third missionary journey, Timothy started. Are you with me? Are you understanding? I want you to respond to the chat, chat boxes. If you can respond, put your response on the comment box, on the chat box, that will be great. Are you really following what I'm saying? Hopefully this is easy. It's not a rocket science. We all can understand. We all can understand and keep the things in tight in order so that you will know what, who, is, who is where, right? So in third missionary journey, who is the companion of Paul? It is Timothy. So both of them journeyed from Antioch and they came to Ephesus. At Ephesus, and this is what we are seeing at Ephesus, Lord worked many miracles through Paul so that when face clothes or aprons that touch his skin were applied to the sick, then diseases left them and the evil spirit came out of them. It is mentioned in Acts chapter 19, Acts of Apostles chapter 19, verse 1 to 12 you will see these facts, especially verse 12. I want you to read verse 12. Let's read this in Malayalam also. Apostolar Pravarti, Patomada Madhyayam, and the Pandrana Vakya on the Vaicha Sahajan. Avanda Manuel Nenda, Akuma Alu, Mutariyo, Bogigal Rame, Kondo Vandagiyo, Vyadigal Rame, Vitumaragiyo, 
നടന്ന ഒരു സംഭവമാണ് റൂമാലുകൾ തന്റെ മേലുള്ള അങ്ങികൾ ഒരാൾ ടച്ച് ചെയ്താൽ അവരെ രോഗം സൗഖ്യമാകുന്നു ഭൂതബാധങ്ങൾ മാറുന്നു ഭൂതങ്ങൾ അലറി ഓടുന്നു അത്ഭുതങ്ങളാൽ അട്ടയാളങ്ങളാൽ യേശുവിൽ വിശ്വസിച്ച് പൗലോസിനെ ടച്ച് ചെയ്തവര് പോലും സൗഖ്യമായി എന്ന വേദപുസ്തകം പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്നു സോ ബൈബിൾ ഇസ് ടീച്ചിങ് യു നോ ലോഡ് സ്റ്റാർട്ടഡ് വർക്കിംഗ് ബിക്കോസ് പോൾ വാസ് പ്രീച്ചിങ് ജീസസ് ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് in the same way how jesus would heal when people came and touched the handkerchief or aprons of of paul that was connected to his skin that was you know in contact with the skin of paul miracles happened sick were healed diseases were healed and evil spirit fled out friends god can do this kind of miracles so it's not wrong when you see that kind of stuff we should not be very very allergic to miracles we should not be very very opposite to miracles you know god does but there are so many fake that happens today so because few people fake that doesn't mean that it's not working it still it can work when we talk about this one thing you know i want you to see uh, Uh, one important verse it's not just this like paul here paul also spoke about baptism but before baptism i would just come to see one more important thing in here um uh, before he could before before we see the miracles um these miracles were done by jesus it happened when paul minister it happened when the first century church was ministering all these things miracles happen that doesn't mean that the miracle is not happening today miracle happens it is still happening so friends please have faith in miracles just because few people fake these kind of things there are so many people who fake people you know Uh, people are just throwing quotes you will see people you know throw their blazers and you will see people give fall down they will crawl and do all kind of stuff there uh, i don't know about that part but i will tell you something that can somebody have faith for healing even by touching the garments yes it can happen it happened in the ministry of jesus it happened in the ministry of peter it happened in the ministry of early church it happened in the ministry of paul so i will say every church member everybody who is listening me please do not have negative feelings about about miracles i do believe right now it's not necessary that you should touch the garments but right now the faith that you have in christ can bring healing to your life my lord is able to do healing even virtually even when you are listening me and i am speaking the word of jesus christ these words that comes to your ears that you see on screen it can right away touch you and heal you i would urge and advise you that please do not have negative feelings about miracles miracles work christian ministry is about miracle not necessary every time miracle would work but miracle works it today also it can heal your sick body jesus power can penetrate through this media to the bed where you are lying to that son and daughter who is sick to that person who is sick jesus can heal that is the power of jesus can i get some good amen by faith that those who believe that miracles still work and i just want to advise you i want to minister to somebody please do not have negative feel about miracles please do not have negative feel about miracles because this negative feel about miracles can take away your blessing it can take away your healing it can take you know enemy can control over you his possessions can control over you because once you shut down with for miracles once you don't once you doubt and you're confused about miracles 
enemy will take a hold in your life and his foothold, his stronghold will be very strong in your life. I will say start believing in miracles. We are not believing in fake miracles, but we are believing in real miracles that comes in the name of Jesus. Let the miracle happen right now in your family, in your personal life, in the life of your children. Somebody need to say, Amen, Lord, I believe. And also break that the chain of doubt. If you are struggling, how to believe? I've seen so much of negative things. I've heard so much of negative things. That's fine. That's fine. Just because there are so many people who would say negative, that doesn't mean that God is not the God of miracle. He is the God of miracle. Please be open and have a positive mindset for miracle because I believe right now with this verse, the miracle will happen in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because acts of apostle is still working. It's not over. Acts of apostle started on the day of Pentecost. It never ended. It will not end until the day when the church is raptured. Until the day that Jesus goes. So friends, if you are going through a tough time in your family, in your personal life, in your, in your, in your professional life, I pray for a miracle in the name of Jesus. That day, on, you know, during those days, it was necessary for people to go and touch the people or be in the crowd. Today, this facility we have on media, I do believe through media right now, God can touch you. I've, I've, I have heard so many stories of people when preaching and they touched the radios and they were healed. I have also heard the stories and miracles about people where before the television, when the preaching was going on, even if that was a recorded preaching, people got healed. This can happen today. Friends, believe Jesus can do miracles. And I do pray that as I am speaking, somebody will get healed. Somebody will see the radiance of God. Somebody will see the glory of God. Innum ഞാൻ ഇത് പറയുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ ചിലരുടെ ശുശ്രൂഷയോട് തന്നെ പറയട്ടെ ദൈവക്കളെ അത്ഭുതങ്ങളോട് ഒരു നെഗറ്റീവ് ചിന്തകൾ നമ്മൾ ഡെവലപ്പ് ചെയ്യല്ലേ നമ്മൾ നെഗറ്റീവ് കാര്യങ്ങൾ പറയുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ ഓട്ടോമാറ്റിക്കലി ആ നാവ് കൊണ്ട് പറയുമ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ ഉള്ളിൽ തന്നെ നെഗറ്റീവ് ഓ അങ്ങനെ സംഭവിക്കത്തില്ല കണ്ടില്ല അവിടെ ഭയങ്കര ഫേക്ക് ആയിട്ട് നടന്നു ഇവിടെ ഫേക്ക് ആയിട്ട് നടന്നു എവിടും ഫേക്ക് ആയിട്ട് നടക്കട്ടെ പക്ഷെ ദൈവം ഫേക്ക് അല്ല അവൻ ഇന്നും അത്ഭുത മന്ത്രിയാ അവൻ ഇന്നും അത്ഭുതം ചെയ്യുവാൻ ശക്തനായ ദൈവമാണ് അപ്പോൾ ഞാൻ ഇത് പഠിപ്പിക്കുമ്പോൾ ചില ആ ദൈവമക്കള് അവര് ഭയങ്കര വിശ്വാസമുണ്ട് കർത്താവിൽ വിശ്വാസം ഉണ്ടെങ്കിലും പല കാര്യങ്ങൾ കണ്ടിട്ട് ഈ ഇതുപോലത്തെ അത്ഭുതങ്ങളിൽ നിന്ന് അവർ വിശ്വാസം മറഞ്ഞു പോയി മാറിപ്പോയി ഞാൻ പറയട്ടെ ഇന്ന് ആ ചെയിൻ ഒന്ന് ബ്രേക്ക് ചെയ്യാമെങ്കിൽ പിന്നെയും അത്ഭുതങ്ങളുടെ പരമ്പര ജീവിതത്തിൽ സംഭവിക്കും ഐ ക്യാൻ ഓൾവേസ് ജസ്റ്റിഫൈ ഐ വാസ് ബ്ലൈൻഡ് ഫോർ ത്രീ ഇയേഴ്സ് God has healed me supernaturally without any medicine God has healed me for 3 years I was blind yes friends you know my radio ulna bone was broken and there was a plaster that was given to me for 6 months back in those days when I used to be in school but on the same day when the day the bone was broken on the same day I was attending a convention God healed me when i was praying at home for a healing god healed me and i know miracles happens i have seen miracles definitely in due course of time in all these years you know our faith might have diminished many times we depend upon lot of other things we depend upon people we depend upon medicine all those things i mean those things are good i'm not saying no or negative things about that but still god works In the name of Jesus, Yeshu in the name of the Lord, I will be able to pray for you. I will be able to pray for you. I will be able to pray for you. And the thing that would happen is that there was a confusion in Ephesus when actually Paul distinguished between the baptism of John and baptism in the name of Jesus. So what happened in chapter 19 is Paul meets few disciples in, in Ephesus. So when Paul came in, already Aquila and Priscilla is there, but Paul, while he was going somewhere in the city of Ephesus, he found some disciples. And those disciples came and started talking to Paul. 
And then Paul points out, hey, you are, are you disciples? Oh, yeah, yeah, we are disciples. Okay, have you received Holy Spirit? Then disciples said, what is that Holy Spirit? We don't know about that Holy Spirit. He said, okay, then what kind of baptism did you took? That means if you receive water baptism, you might have heard the name of Holy Spirit because whenever we baptize, we baptize in the name of Father, in the name of Son, and in the name of Holy Spirit. Paul asked, okay, so tell me, what kind of baptism did you take? And they said, oh, we took the baptism of John. Then Jesus is differentiating between the baptism of John and baptism of Jesus Christ to receive salvation. And John, he's, Jesus and Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance. Paul points out that John's baptism was one of repentance, not necessarily faith and to salvation. That means John the Baptist, he had few disciples and John the Baptist was baptizing the baptism of repentance. That was not the baptism of salvation. It was the baptism of repentance. And then Paul said, you need to have the baptism of salvation. So there were two kinds of baptism. Today also people are very confused about this. And this one, one, one particular phrase confuses a lot. There were 12 Ephesians disciples. Probably they were the disciples of John the Baptist. They believed on Jesus and they were baptized and they received the Holy Spirit with his gifts. So Bible says when they heard this, when they heard was what Paul was teaching, they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. Here is a confusion. Everybody should understand this confusion. So you see, they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. So there you might ask a question. Oh, by the way, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. That means baptism should be in the name of Jesus. Why are we baptizing in the name of Father, Son and Holy Spirit? We should not be doing this. I want you to understand this fact. Everybody, please understand this fact. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. When this name is coming, Lord Jesus, that is not to show that the baptism formula is in the name of Jesus. This is only to differentiate from John's baptism. This was only to differentiate that this baptism is not John's baptism. This baptism is Jesus baptism. Because these 11 disciples, uh, 12 Ephesian disciples, they were baptized by John. And they had the baptism of repentance. So it is simply when it is written in the name of Lord Jesus. This is differentiating between their baptism and the baptism of Jesus. ശുദ്ധീകരണം <laughs> സ്നാനമാണെന്ന്ാനിക്കാൻ <laughs> Name of Lord Jesus, Yeshu Namathil Snana Patu in the Paranada. Either Uris Nanathan the formula Lakadam, Yeshu Tanaparno, Ninga Snana Pertumo, Ninga Sana Pertanam. Pidavideim, 
പുത്രന്റെയും പരിശുദ്ധാത്മാവിനെ നാമത്തിൽ യേശു തന്നെ സ്നാനപ്പെടുത്തി അത് മാത്രമല്ല പിൻകാലത്തുള്ള സകല സ്നാനങ്ങളും അപ്രകാരം തന്നെയാണ് നടന്നത് ആദ്യ നൂറ്റാണ്ട് ദൈവസഭകൾ മൊത്തം സ്നാനം നടന്നത് പിതാവിന്റെയും പുത്രന്റെയും പരിശുദ്ധാത്മാവിന്റെയും നാമത്തിലാണ് സ്നാനപ്പെടുത്തിയത് സോ റിമെമ്പർ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ദർ വാസ് നോ കൺഫ്യൂഷൻ ഇൻ ദ ഫേസ്റ്റ് സിക്സ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ഇയേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ദ ഫേസ്റ്റ് സിക്സ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ഇയേഴ്സ് ദർ വാസ് നോ കൺഫ്യൂഷൻ അബൌട്ട് ബാപ്റ്റിസം ഫോർമുല everybody in first century church you go to any books any book that you read whether you read the book of you know this is a, this is a great book the book the confession a great book that you can read if you go and this is a, and this is another book if you can get a copy of this get this copy didache this is the second book after bible to know how disciples work how disciples do this is a very good get a book of this didache very good book after bible this is the trusted document see bible is the only important that is the major document that is the main document but after bible this is the second document didache in this book everything is written what the early church did how the 12 apostles you know minister പന്ത്രണ്ട് ശിഷ്യന്മാർ എങ്ങനെ മിനിസ്റ്റർ ചെയ്തു എങ്ങനെയായിരുന്നു ആദ്യ നൂറ്റാണ്ടിലെ സഭകൾ അവർ എങ്ങനെയാ ശുശ്രൂഷിച്ചത് ലോഡ് സ്റ്റേബിൾ എങ്ങനെയാ നടത്തിയത് സ്നാനം എങ്ങനെയാ നടത്തിയത് അവരെ ചർച്ചകൾ എങ്ങനെയായിരുന്നു ഇതെല്ലാം നന്നായി എഴുതിയ ഒരു പുസ്തകമാണ് ഡിഡാക്കെ ആർക്കെങ്കിലും ഇതിന്റെ കോപ്പി കിട്ടുവാണെങ്കിൽ തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും വായിക്കണം അത് വായിച്ചാൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് അത് മനസ്സിലാക്കുകയും ചെയ്യും സോ ദർ വാസ് നോ കൺഫ്യൂഷൻ അബൌട്ട് baptism formula in the first century in the second century third century 100 years 200 years 300 years 400 years there was no confusion everybody baptized in the name of father son and holy spirit it is lately now who don't know most theological works who don't know theology who don't know history they just simply read one verse and will come to a understanding of theology it is never happening that so friends we need to understand why this is written in the name of lord jesus christ because they wanted to differentiate this baptism from the baptism of john john the baptist manasai kaanum enna yan vishwasikkunu manasai ittundengil athil nu ezhudi kaanichu manasai ittundanna right avval ee ee vishayathil oru kaari manasaakanam the people who were uh, who were believing these people Uh, who came to faith were people who received John's baptism and so now they received the baptism of Jesus Christ uh, so now the men were about 12 it all reminds us that not the entire church in Ephesus had this incomplete understanding and embraces of Jesus person and what that means there was only a few people it's not the whole church there were there were, there were people in churches uh, who had received the baptism in the name of father son and holy spirit believing in jesus christ to receive salvation this few people there take note the people in the city of ephesus were very superstitious e ephesus le or etto biliyoru or shaabam avare bhayangaramayi superstitious ayirun superstitious ayirun so adu ningal sadhikiga aa superstitious thalapathu what happened is that they were superstitious they also believed in magic they believed in witchcraft they worship idols and false god so when paul came into the city with the message of true and living god people got offended people got offended so ephesus was just like corinth they all were idolatry idolaters they had witchcraft lot kind of magics and kind of things so people were offended because paul was bringing a new message in there so what happened is that he paul continued his ministry in ephesus paulus said that his ministry in ephesus was shaktamai cheyidu ഏകദേശം മൂന്ന് വർഷത്തിലധികം അവിടെ നിന്നിട്ട് ശുശ്രൂഷിച്ചത് ഹി വെന്റ് ഇൻ ടു സിനഗോ ആൻഡ് സ്പോക്ക് ബോൾഡ് ഫോർ ത്രീ മന്ത്സ് കണ്ടിന്യൂസ്ലി ഹി സ്പോക്ക് ഇൻ സിനഗോ ഓക്കെ ഇൻ വോട്ട് ഇസ് പോൾ ഹാഡ് ആൻഡ് എക്സ്റ്റെൻഡ് ടൈം ഓഫ് പ്രീച്ചിങ് ഇൻ സിനഗോ ബട്ട് ഈ വെച്ചുള്ളി യു നോ ദ ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻസ് ഓഫ് ദോസ് ജ്യൂസ് റിജക്ടിംഗ് മെസ്സേജ് ഡ്രോവ് ഹിം ഔട്ട് ദൻ റിസ്യൂം ഹിസ് ടീച്ചിങ് ഇൻ എ ഹോൾ ഓഫ് ജെൻറ്റൈൽ ടീച്ചർ നെയിംഡ് tyrannous so hopefully you are seeing this thing in malayalam bible you know these portions you might be seeing that in malayalam bible so paul had an extended time of preaching and he started preaching in in, in synagogue 
but later on people expelled him out of synagogue synagogue il continuous alla prasangam nimittam pala yahudanmarku adu buddhimuthai mari avar avasana synagogue il ninnu avare thalli porthaakki tyrannus de school il പിന്നെ പഠിപ്പിക്കാൻ ആ സ്കൂളിൻ്റെ ഒരു ഹോളിനകത്ത് തന്നെ ആരാധന നടത്തുകയും ദൈവവചനം പഠിപ്പിക്കുകയും ചെയ്തു യുനോ വി ഓൾ സി വർഷിപ്പ് പ്ലേസ് ഇൻ സ്കൂൾസ് റൈറ്റ് സ്കൂൾസ് സോ എസ്പെഷ്യലി ഇൻ ഇന്ത്യ വി ഹാവ് ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് സ്കൂൾസ് വേർ പീപ്പിൾ ഡോൺറ്റ് ഹാവ് ചർച്ചസ് ദ ഗോ ടു സ്കൂൾ ടു ഹാവ് ദിയർ ഗ്യാദറിങ്സ് സോ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ദിസ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ജസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ഇന്ത്യ ബട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഹാപ്പൻ ഇവൻ പോൾസ് ടൈം പോൾ ടുക്ക് എ ക്ലാസ് റൂം ഓഫ് ടൈറനസ് ഹി ഹാഡ് as tyrannus had a school so he took a classroom in the school and he started preaching and teaching and worshiping god in the school because the doors of synagogue were closed now paul's continuing ministry in the city of ephesus he went to synagogue and spoke boldly for three months and this is what exactly in tyrannus uh, school he ended up in tyrannus school and this continued for two years that means in the school the ministry continued for two years rendu varsham ee ministry continue cheyidu ee school galil aaradhana nadakkey school galil students gal padikkam veratha samayangalil aaradhanagal nadakkey devajana padipikkey cheyidu polus appo tyrannus inde school aa adu vedi upayogichathu and his effective teaching equipped the believers who got the word of god out to all who dwelt in asia so paul was teaching and the people who learned they went and spoke and taught outside this is exactly what i want you to do you are learning here what you need to do please don't take just as an information teach this to your friends have conversation when you go and meet somebody in your in somebody's house visit go and talk about this talk about this because you are learning and you are talking and, and when you talk when you tell others this is in your memory you will never forget it so if you are just hearing this putting this down in your diary in your notebook it you will forget but when you start talking to others it will continue so paul did the same thing his disciples did the same thing and then i will let's talk about that miracle going back to the unusual miracle in ephesus now god worked unusual miracles by the hands of paul so that even handkerchief or aprons were bought from his body to the sick and the disease left them and the evil spirit went out of them this is an unusual thing that happened god used handkerchief or aprons in such a way the piece of material were presumably those which paul used in his tent making or leather working the sweat rags of tying around his head and aprons for tying around his waist that became a powerful tool for healing friends it was not the power in the apron or even that sweat rags it was the power of christ that transcended through the clothes or through the materials because of the faith of people so friends if can these things happen yes this can happen please don't say this will never happen it can happen is it happening now yes it could happen here we hear the testimonies about this all every time but have people made this very commercial yes people made this very commercial people started selling oils people started selling miracle towels people started selling miracle you know miracle salt and miracle sugar and miracle materials miracle water now all these things people these are commercial god never asked to do that it is by faith when people have done these things god has acted on their faith today also it can happen that's why i want to tell everybody who is listening to me i don't know who you are if you are a pentecostal believer if you are a marthomite if you are baptist or no matter who you are if you as long as you are a christian believe in miracle it can happen please do not develop a negative sensation about miracles because if you once develop a negative sensitivity towards miracle it will continue to hold your faith like that you will never see a miracle Do you remember the miracle of that one person during the drought where the prophet said you will see you will see it with your eyes 
You will hear it with your ears, but you will never enjoy the miracle. Do you remember that portion when the prophet was saying that? Same thing. That means that man who said, even if God would open the gates of heaven, this is not going to happen. Because prophet said, tomorrow at this time, Samaria will see a miracle. Samaria will see wheat and barley where it is now famine. And this man said, even if God opened the floodgates of heaven, this will not happen. And prophet told him, it will happen for everybody. You will see it, you will hear it, but you will not receive it. And this man heard when God opened the floodgates of heaven that bread was provided, food was provided, but he saw that, he heard it, but he could not eat, he died. So friends, can this happen? Yes, that can happen. I want you, I want to minister to you. I want to serve you today. I want to serve you in full humility that Jesus is a miracle worker. Jesus is a miracle worker. Christian life is a life of miracle. Miracle may not happen every day as you think, but miracle happens every moment, whether you accept it or not. Friends, you are alive. That itself is a miracle. You are breathing. That itself is a miracle. There were times you have seen death face to face, but you were delivered out of that. How many times, I always say in my preaching, how many times you drove your car while you were sleeping? How many times you, you went through places that you never thought, but in every area you have seen the hand of God. Can I get some good amen from those people who have ever experienced the miracle. How many of you can, in this, in this group, how many of you can testify, I have seen a miracle. Personally, I told you, I have seen a miracle. I have seen a miracle. So I want somebody to tell me or tell this group that miracle happens, it happened to me. Is there anybody? I, I know you are saying amen, but I don't want you to say just amen. But can I get somebody to testify I have seen a miracle. Yes, it's not just me. There are multiple times. Yeah, many times. Great. That's a great thing. Many times. Great. Yes, I have. Great. Yes. Let's let's glorify the name of the Lord. If you have seen miracle, glorify the name of the Lord. Because when you glorify the name of the Lord, when you say and testify the miracle, I want to let you know. Why did, why did even God do, did that miracle? God did that miracle so that you can tell people that God has done a miracle and God is a miracle worker. Miracles are not to be kept in secret. Miracles are not to be kept in secret. Miracles are your testimony to tell others, yes, I have seen miracles because the whole world says there are no miracles. Science says no miracles. People around you will say no miracles. But we need some people who believe in God, who have ever seen a miracle to testify, hey, miracle happens. My testimony is miracle happens. I am alive because miracle happens. And once you say, and when you glorify and when you testify, God will give you another miracle for a second testimony, for another testimony. So let's glorify the name of the Lord, saying that our God is a miracle worker. Okay? This uh, handkerchief or apron work, how did that work? See, in Acts chapter 5, verse 15, you can see that when Peter was going, his shadow fell on sick people and through the shadow, they were healed. Yep. So, through the shadow or through the shadow of Peter, people were healed. Amen. Right? That means it's not just this one place, but Bible shows multiple places of things happen. Through clothes, God can heal. Through shadows, God can heal. See, shadow is the... Okay, that's a, that's a difference here. Cloth, garment, apron is material. It's, it feels the touch. It feels the touch. Shadow is a dead thing. It's a real thing, but a dead thing. Shadow will not touch somebody. 
shadow will not be felt by somebody shadow cannot be you know it has no life but even with shadows god can heal that means god is simply telling i don't need a material to heal somebody even the most dead thing the shadow will be enough for a man who believe to be healed for miracle how you feel get really really so i want you to go to that epitome of faith let's raise the 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 bar of our faith for the things that you are going through for the toughest thing that you feel that it is impossible for me to do the things or you feel like it is impossible for me to get out of the situation even you don't need a shadow god can do that can somebody trust in the most vulnerability in the most obscurity in the most depth of that despairness can you believe jesus can do the miracle they were called apostola pravarti anjam adhyam 15th vakyathil apostolanaya patrosne nidal tatti aalkar saukhyam aayittundengil ore edatha വസ്ത്രം തൊട്ടപ്പോൾ സൗഖ്യമായെങ്കിൽ അങ്കി തൊട്ടപ്പോൾ സൗഖ്യമായെങ്കിൽ റൂമാൽ തൊട്ടപ്പോൾ സൗഖ്യമായെങ്കിൽ തൊട്ടാൽ ഫീലാകാത്ത നിഴൽ തട്ടിയാൽ പോലും സൗഖ്യമാക്കാൻ കഴിവുള്ള ഒരു ദൈവത്തെ ആ നാം സീവിക്കുന്നത് നമ്മുടെ വിശ്വാസം അവിടെ വർദ്ധിക്കേണ്ടത് അവിടെ വർദ്ധിക്കേണ്ടത് എന്നെ ഇപ്പം സാക്ഷാൽ ഉടുത്ത തലെ കൈ വെക്കണം ഒന്നുമില്ല ഒരു നിഴൽ പോലും ഇല്ലെങ്കിലും ദൈവത്തിന് സൗഖ്യമാക്കാൻ പറ്റും ഞാൻ ഇത് പറയുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ പ്രവചനാത്മാവിൽ ഈ ദൈവവചന അടിസ്ഥാനത്തിൽ ചിലരോട് പ്രവചിച്ചു പറയട്ടെ വചനപ്രകാരം യേശുവിന്റെ നാമത്തിൽ സൗഖ്യമുണ്ട് അതിനൊരു നിഴൽ പോലും വേണമെന്നില്ല ഒരു ദൈവദാസൻ വന്നിട്ട് തലയിൽ കൈ വെക്കണമെന്നില്ല നിന്റെ വിശ്വാസം നിന്നെ സൗഖ്യമാക്കാൻ പറ്റും ഇന്ന് രാത്രിയിൽ ദൈവവചനം കേൾക്കുന്ന ദൈവമക്കളെ നിങ്ങളുടെ ഏറ്റവും വലിയ ആ ഇരുട്ടിന്റെ അനുഭവത്തിൽ ഒരു മനുഷ്യനും സഹായമില്ല ഒരു മനുഷ്യൻ കൂടെ ഇല്ല നിൽക്കാനോ പറയാനോ ആരും ഇല്ലാതിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ നിനക്ക് വേണ്ടി ഇറങ്ങി വരുന്ന ഒരു സ്വർഗം ഉണ്ടെന്ന് വിശ്വസിക്കാൻ പറ്റുമെങ്കിൽ ആ വിശ്വാസം ഒന്ന് മാറ്റിയിട്ട് വിശ്വസിക്കാം സ്പീക്കിംഗ് in the power and anointing of holy spirit speaking and releasing the power of healing in the name of jesus it's not about shibu thomas it's not about anybody else but in the name of jesus yes our god is a healer and you know what when that 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 woman with issue of blood for 12 years came and touched the hem of the garment of jesus christ she was healed right so jesus is a healer so it's 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 he who heals no matter what you touch remember the works of miracles are still there so super there were so many superstitious people in ephesus they saw how paul's handkerchief was working they saw how paul's garment was working they saw how miracles was working they was they saw how evil spirit were fleeing out it was a surprising moment for everybody as they got surprised and they were fast reasoning what happened is that there were seven sons of skeva in ephesus okay so now you know skeva lived in ephesus he had seven sons and they were jewish exorcist jewish exorcist means they they cast out demons by the power of demons they cast out demons by the power of demons not by good power they were jewish exorcist okay they cast out but what happened is that they were doing trade making money by casting out demons with the help of demon so they liked the formula of paul they came and they saw paul was doing miracle they saw paul how could paul do this they heard paul is saying in the name of jesus demons go out and demons get out in the name of jesus be healed and they get healed so the sons of skeva they saw this thing and they started practicing the formula of paul 
they didn't have connection with Jesus they don't know Jesus they are not people who are saved they didn't receive Holy Spirit they simply copied Paul and started doing the same ministry ഐഡിയാണല്ലോ <laughs> മാർക്കറ്റിൽ പുതിയൊരു ട്രെൻഡ് പോലോസ് ഇറക്കിയേക്കുന്നു എന്തോ യേശുവിന്റെ നാമത്തിൽ സൗഖ്യവും യേശുവിന്റെ നാമത്തിൽ ഭൂതങ്ങൾ അലറി ഓടുന്നു ഈ സ്കേവയുടെ മക്കൾ ഇത് നോക്കിയപ്പോൾ അവർ ഓർത്തു എന്നാൽ പിന്നെ ഈ പുതിയ ട്രെൻഡാ ഇനിയുള്ള ട്രെൻഡ് ആൾക്കാരെല്ലാം അങ്ങോട്ട് പോകുന്ന മുമ്പേ ഇവരുടെ ട്രെൻഡ് ഇവരെ മാറ്റി ഇവർ ഇത്രയും നാള് ഭൂതങ്ങളെ ഇറക്കുന്നത് പിശാചിന്റെ ശക്തിയാലായിരുന്നു ഭൂതത്തെയും കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ഭൂതത്തെ ഇറക്കുമായിരുന്നു പക്ഷെ ഈ കുറി പുതിയ ട്രെൻഡ് കണ്ടപ്പോൾ ഇവർ അത് കോപ്പി പേസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്തു കോപ്പി പേസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്തു സി ദിസ് ഇസ് എക്സാക്ട്ലി വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ടു ഡേ ഓൾസോ റൈറ്റ് വെൻ വൺ പേഴ്സൺ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് എ ട്രെൻഡ് ആൻഡ് എവറിബഡി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ടു ഫോളോ ദ ട്രെൻഡ് വൺ പേഴ്സൺ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ലാഫിങ് എവറിബഡി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ലാഫിങ് വൺ പേഴ്സൺ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ക്രോളിങ് എവറിബഡി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ക്രോളിങ് വൺ പേഴ്സൺ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ഫോളിങ് എവറിബഡി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ഫോളിങ് വൺ പേഴ്സൺ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വോമിറ്റിംഗ് എവറിബഡി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വോമിറ്റിംഗ് വൺ പേഴ്സൺ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് അപ് സൈഡ് ഡൗൺ ദ ഓൾ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് അപ് സൈഡ് ഡൗൺ one paper one person go and climb on the doors and windows other person also climbs the doors and windows this is copycat copycat ministry is not copycat thing ministry is not copy and paste definitely no it is a different so you know this is what is happening in this world today it's all replica of the sons of skeva skeva ide makkalude ishtam pol duplicates in the logathil undu ഒരുത്തൻ എന്തെങ്കിലും തുടങ്ങിയാൽ എവിടെയെങ്കിലും ബാംഗ്ലൂരിലായിരിക്കും തുടങ്ങുന്നത് അപ്പോഴത്തേക്കും എല്ലായിടത്തും അങ്ങ് ചെല്ലും പിന്നെ അത് നാട്ടിലും ചെല്ലും പിന്നെ അത് നോർത്ത് ഇന്ത്യയിലും ചെല്ലും എല്ലായിടത്തും ചെല്ലും എല്ലാ സ്ഥലവും ചെല്ലും ഇതിൻ്റെ ഒക്കെ ഉറവിടം ഏതെങ്കിലും ഒരു സ്ഥലത്തായിരിക്കും ഒന്നുകിൽ ബാംഗ്ലൂരായിരിക്കും പിന്നെ ഇപ്പം നാട്ടിലും കുറേ ഉറവിടമുണ്ട് കൊച്ചിയിലും കുറേ ഉറവിടമുണ്ട് അവിടെ ഇവിടെയും കുറേ സ്ഥലങ്ങളുണ്ട് ഈ മക്കളെ ഈ കോപ്പി ക്യാറ്റ് ബിസിനസ് എന്ന് നമ്മൾ പുറത്തിറങ്ങണം മിനിസ്ട്രി കോപ്പി ക്യാറ്റ് ബിസിനസ് അല്ല ഒരാൾ ചെയ്യുന്നത് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ചെയ്യാനുള്ള സംഭവമല്ല ദൈവം എല്ലാവരും വ്യത്യസ്തത so ministry is not a trend you know it's not a trend it's not a trending thing ministry is something different this is a classic example of following a trend so what happened is that skeva's sons they went and they started casting out demons how oh, the demons started screaming and demons said we know jesus we know paul but who are you and what they did is demon started attacking the sons of skeva and if you read that portion in bible you will really laugh these sons of skeva they ran naked because this evil spirit beat at them so much they ran naked i know they would never come back to city ഈ സ്കേവയുടെ മക്കൾ കോപ്പിയെ കൊടു ചെയ്തു ഭൂതം പറഞ്ഞാട എനിക്ക് യേശുവിനെ അറിയാം എനിക്ക് പോലൂസിനെ അറിയാം നീ ആരാ ചോദിച്ചു പോലൂസിനെ അറിയാം യേശുവിനെ അറിയാം നീ ആരാ ചോദിച്ചു അങ്ങനെ ചോദിച്ചിട്ട് ഒറ്റ അടിയായിരുന്നു ഈ ഏഴ് പിള്ളേരെ ഇട്ട് അടിച്ച് അങ്ങോട്ട് ഓടിച്ചപ്പോൾ വസ്ത്രമില്ലാതെ ഇവർ ഓടിയെന്ന സിറ്റിയിൽ ദേ മക്കളെ ദിസ് ഈസ് വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് വെൻ വി കോപ്പി പേസ്റ്റ് യു നോ ദ റിസൾട്ട്സ് ആർ വെരി ബാഡ് റിമെമ്പർ many people get down, get frustrated confused with this kind of copycat thing so jewish exorcists failed because they had no personal relationship with jesus they only know jesus is god of paul not their own so when they casted out demons they said get out in the name of jesus whom paul speaks this is not going to work you what what works for paul is not going to work for you we need to have a personal relationship with jesus christ this is giving us so everybody who want to do ministry especially those evangelists those pastors who are here especially young people those who are learning and you know getting a training and discipleship i want to let you know you have a unique ministry you cannot copy shubhu thomas you cannot copy anybody else in this world remember what what has given to me has given to me what has given to you has been given to you so you can do only your you can copy my prayer you can copy anybody else ministry you are unique so trust god in this unique things and god will definitely take you in 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 his hand and he will do a great thing for you so friends you know many in ephesus 
renounce the object associated with demons. As soon as people saw these demons, you know, fighting, demons beating the sons of Sceva, people believed in Jesus Christ. And this became known both to all the Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus and fear fell on them all. When they saw the sons of Sceva running naked, everybody was scared. They all believed in Jesus Christ. This incident with sons of Sceva impressed the people with the reality of demonic realm. They understood that demons are there and demons are scared of Jesus. Demons are not scared of any human being. Demons are not scared of how strong you are, how big you are, how how good you are. No, no, no. Demons are scared, scared only by Jesus Christ. So people understood that there is a demonic realm. There is a realm with uh, all kind of demonic things. And they understood that there is a power that can subdue the power of demons and that is Jesus Christ. So all the heaven and earth bow before that name. Today also this name is here. Today also this name is very powerful. Friends, this name can bring salvation to you. This name can bring healing to you. I'm telling you, if you are at home, I want you to just lift up your hands and praise God. Say that every demonic power that comes in your house, that takes away your peace, in the name of Jesus, we cast it out. Friends, I want to tell you, your house is the house of the Lord. Your prayer is an altar. Your words of prayer is a sacrifice before the Lord. Start sacrificing, giving thanks to the Lord and say, in the name of Jesus, I sanctify this place of this house. I want to tell you, every relationship can be sanctified. You will see some bad things happening. You will see some challenges in your family, maybe your spouse, your kids, your parents, no matter what challenge it will be. In the atmosphere of praise, in the atmosphere of prayer, would you lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord, for your control in this atmosphere. And in the name of Jesus, let demons go. There is a power in your faith right now.